As puppy owners, we need to think about adolescence from the very start of our relationship with our dogs. So even though adolescence may seem a long way off if you've got a small puppy, the things that happen in this puppy stage can really influence how adolescence goes. If things go wrong in the puppy phase and there's a lack of connection between the dog and the handler, or if fear and excessive punishment has been used as a way to gain compliance in training, the puppy may grow into an adolescent and the response to fear and lack of connection that's been there since puppyhood can start to really escalate quite rapidly. If you get the puppy stuff right and you build an amazing bond and you have fun, you develop a very healthy relationship that promotes things like choice, independence and lots of trust, you're likely to have a slightly smoother ride during the adolescent phase. But if you're already at the adolescent phase, it's kind of pointless as dwelling on the puppy phase and what you could or should have done differently. We've got to focus on the here and the now. Your adolescent Labrador will be hormone fueled. They'll be seeking new independence and feeling frustration when things don't go their way. You'll be stressed and probably quite upset at times, but your dog will be feeling these emotions too. So we must have a huge amount of understanding, a lot of tolerance, a lot of patience, and a huge amount of compassion. But we must also have another huge dose of forgiveness for actually the crazy stuff that your Labrador is likely to do during adolescence. Let's take a look at the few of the things to consider that might help you and your Labrador through adolescence. First of all, let's talk about arousal and excitement. Earlier on, I described an adolescent Labrador as being similar to a fizzy bottle of Coca-Cola that's going to explode as soon as you take the lid off. And your job is to let that fizz out of the bottle in a very controlled way so we don't get any explosions. So in real terms, you need to stop your dog becoming over aroused. You need to stop them becoming overstimulated or, or overexcited. Your adolescent dog has a lack of self-control and impulse control in this stage. So you as their handler have got to step in and help them. Overstimulation can be influenced by new environments. It could be exciting people, new dogs, a favorite food some energetic play, and actually a whole host of other things as well. So we must choose our environments and activities carefully when we have an adolescent Labrador. A quiet park may be a better option than a beach full of other exciting dogs. A one-to-one -one dog walker might be a better option than sending your adolescent dog to a daycare centre. Adults training the dog may be better than leaving it to the kids. A calm sniffing game might be better than an energetic game of fetch. So think about your daily activities. What gets your dog really excited? What makes them fizzy? What makes them so excited that they can't listen and respond rationally? Your task is to think about how you can lessen the excitement and the arousal levels that your dog is exposed to during their adolescent phase. We don't want them to become overexcited or overstimulated because when they do, they will make mistakes. They'll make bad choices and they're going to get opportunities to practice behaving in ways that you may not want to encourage. So instead of doing exciting and stimulating things with your adolescent dog, you may decide actually to focus on calm activities. You may decide to go to quiet locations and avoid places where your dog is likely to get overexcited. You may decide to do some work that focuses some training in a secluded area instead of letting them run around a dog park. Of course, we can't totally prevent our adolescent dogs from being excited or being exposed to exciting situations. They need to walk, they need to exercise, they need to play, and they need training. But if training is exciting, if walks are exciting, if games are exciting, then us as responsible handlers and carers for our dogs need to expect a little bit less from the dog and expose them to those activities in much shorter bursts. So rather than putting them through an 
hours training session that makes them lose their mind with total excitement, do 20 minutes instead and finish that 20 minutes on a high with your dog achieving success. And when you see your dog is getting overexcited, over aroused or overstimulated, it's a great sign that they could probably do with a bit of rest. So some calm time where they can reset, recharge their batteries and diffuse. And that takes us on to our next section, which is rest and relaxation. Does your dog have a safe haven, a place to go away from everyone where no one in the house asks the dog to do anything and no one expects any sort of response from them? It could be a bed in a quiet room, a playpen, a crate, anywhere that your dog can go to take pressure off themselves if they feel that life is just getting a bit too much for them. Using their safe haven to develop a sleep and rest routine will really help them self-regulate. So cast your mind back to when you had this puppy of 10 weeks old. You probably noticed that the puppy behaved much better after they'd had a little rest. And the same rules apply to an adolescent dog. So we need to encourage them to go to their safe haven frequently during the day for no other reason than to just have a rest. So I use the words carefully, have a rest. Now, your adolescent dog doesn't need to be asleep, but they should be allowed to rest in peace and quiet. So a spare room or a quiet corner of the house is really quite useful for that. Try and schedule into your day where you give them an hour's rest at least twice a day in a very low distraction environment. As what we tend to notice is that a lack of sleep and rest can be a huge issue that affects behavior in dogs. So when we ask our dog to rest and relax, it's absolutely okay to give them something like a long lasting chew or a treat when you want them to go and rest in their safe place. It's gonna keep it positive for them. And also the activity of chewing is calming for a lot of dogs and it's gonna encourage them to be still in one location and in their bed for an extended period of time. And if a dog is naturally ready for a rest, if they've had an opportunity for them to be laid on their bed for half an hour while they chew a toy, and ultimately they're gonna get a full tummy from that, it's gonna really help them with that desire, just want to rest, have a little nap if their bodies require it. So it's a great way to encourage them just to rest, relax and recharge their batteries. And next, we move on to building positive relationships. During adolescence, your dog wants to spread their wings and explore. They want to grow and develop into their own character. If they feel that you are stopping them from doing this or they feel that you are holding them back, there's going to be conflict. And the conflict will be running both ways. They feel like you're holding them back and you'll feel like they're actively trying just to annoy and frustrate you. So you've got to find activities, tasks, or little snippets of time every day that will allow you and your dog to enjoy some time together, doing things that strengthen your relationship and bond. So have a little think about it. Can you find a particular play activity that you can do with your dog? Does your dog like massage? If they do, give them a daily massage. Does your dog like sniffing? If so, try scatter feeding them with a handful of kibble in the long grass in the garden. Maybe you've got a dog that loves learning. If so, just start some new training with them. Something that you can learn and achieve together. Whatever it is, just make sure it's positive and something that you both like doing together. Here's a few suggestions of some things that you might try. Learn a new set of basic skills such as recall, lead walking, or settling on a mat. Give scent detection a try. Use your Labrador's natural breed traits and give them a workout and start fun gun dog training. If your dog likes to sniff, try an activity called man trailing. If you've got a dog that is full of energy, try agility or canny cross. And if you've not got the energy for all that, opt for something more sedate. So things like trick training at home. Um, teach your dog things like roll over, paw, high five, spin on the spot, 
chin rests or leg weaves. The possibilities of training really are endless. And even if you've already done loads of training, you can always make that a little bit more complex and a bit more interesting. If you choose to do more training as a way to strengthen that bond, and it's something that you both like doing, you'll both be excited about spending time together. And this is going to stop you from both focusing on the frustrations of adolescence. Instead, you'll be focusing on the positives of the training that you're doing. And on the point of positivity, your mindset is a big part of surviving adolescence. You're going to have great days. There'll be absolutely brilliant days where your dog just excels at everything you ask them to do. But on the flip side, you're going to experience whole weeks, full on weeks of just sheer frustration and disappointment. So it's important that you, to some extent, you just need to accept that adolescence is happening. If you lower your expectations slightly of what your dog can achieve during adolescence, if you work on strengthening that relationship with your dog and celebrate the good days, some of the stresses associated with adolescence will start to disappear. And now we move on to providing outlets to your dog. We now know that during adolescence, your dog will have an overwhelming urge to explore, to have freedom, to sniff, to achieve things and be more physically active. So we need to work with those desires to give them an outlet. By giving them an acceptable outlet, they are less likely to feel frustration and act up and misbehave. Give your dog activities to do that are going to allow them to use those natural instincts and desires. It's about finding ways to satisfy their behavioral urges and physical needs. So if you've got a dog that is sniffing like crazy, it's probably because they're smelling scents of dogs and figuring out who's traveled there before them. They're using their nose to fact find. But it may also be because they find a calming and stress relieving activity. So if your dog enjoys sniffing, consider giving them an outlet in a controlled environment by scatter feeding in long grass, enrolling on a scent detection program or joining a man trailing class. And that's where dogs find hidden humans for fun. If you've got a dog that has an abundance of energy and you're struggling to tie them out on a walk around the block, they may start tearing your house and garden up as a way to get rid of that excess energy. So a controlled outlet for that excess energy could be to extend their exercise time. Hire a dog walker, start running for exercise with your dog or join a agility or canny cross group as a way to get rid of that energy. If your adolescent dog has started destroying items in the house, it's more than likely caused by boredom and they're chewing just to amuse themselves and keep themselves occupied. So when we look at outlets for this type of behavior, we need to find more things for them to do, which are essentially going to prevent them from becoming bored. So can you get out and about with them a little bit more? Can you get a dog walker to step in on your behalf if you're busy? Can you do some food based enrichment activities in the house? And on the topic of destroying things, your dog will enjoy destroying things. They get fulfillment out of that because they feel like they're achieving something. And that goes back to their natural instinct of chase it, catch it, kill it. The survival modes that they go through really as, as a wild animal. And there's nothing more fulfilling for a young dog than ripping a cute, cuddly toy to pieces just to get the squeak out. So... Let's tap into that. Why not visit your local charity shop and spend a couple of quid on a bag full of old teddy bears just with the sole purpose of allowing your adolescent frustrated dog an outlet by just letting them tear them into pieces, pulling all the stuffing out and just tapping into that urge that they have. So spend a relatively small amount of money at the charity shop is much, much better than having them destroy their expensive dog toys or even your sofa cushions. If you've got a dog that is displaying seeking type behaviors, such as wandering off, tracking animals, picking up sticks, stealing things and running off or going off to other dogs, then consider activities that could tap into that very naturally occurring desire. As Labrador retriever owners, we can pretty much guarantee that our adolescent Labradors, particularly those from working lines, will have a seeking behavior in them somewhere. 
that's why they're used for retrieving birds, retrieving dummies, retrieving animals. There's no better way really to help a, um, a dog with a seeking type behavior than to train them to do gun dog type skills, such as hunting, finding, picking up and retrieving. In years gone by, that's what Labradors were bred to do. So doing some form of gun dog skills for fun can be a great way to turn that natural desire that they have and that natural instinct into something useful whilst having fun with them, building bonds and giving your dog an outlet.